fun to take floor plans, images of floor plans, and uh, extrude them, uh, trace them out, and then extrude them. This is a model based on what was called the case study house number 12. It was a house that never got built. It was designed back in the 1940s. I would say this model is loosely based on that drawing, but uh, having found a kind of a clunky floor plan online, I traced it out. Which I'll show you how I did that in a minute. These are just different parts of the house. I'm kind of just pulling them up out of the ground, the walls, the lattice work, the furniture, the cars in the driveway, and the roof. And this is a, you know, a fairly faithful rendition of that case study house. Here's how I do a floor plan. Uh, you can find almost the, any old floor plan online in, in, in import it into SketchUp. This is a JPEG. Drag it to a certain size that you feel might be somewhat close and then go somewhere on the plan to somewhere you know the dimension. For instance, a standard bathtub generally is five feet long and so draw a couple lines on that bathtub and then use the tape measure tool in SketchUp to measure the distance between those two lines and in this case they came out as I recall six foot three which is too big so then you just click enter and type in 60 inches which is five feet it asks you do you want to rescale you say yes and now that is scaled down to five feet and now the distance between those two lines will be five feet and then you can go to other things in the house that you're fairly confident of for instance a entry door is going to be somewhere near three feet usually wide and this one turned out pretty darn close and then you can go down to uh, like a kitchen countertop or generally two feet deep you can try those measurements out and see how close you are and then you've got a scaled drawing that is not dead perfect but pretty close to the reality and then after that it's just a matter of extruding walls I just uh, usually use a rectangle tool and just start in on the walls anywhere you'd like and start uh, drawing those rectangles over the top of that wall and once you've done that you can extrude the wall if you don't know the height of the wall you uh, can make it up or if you get lucky and find a an elevation of the plan you can make some assumptions based on door heights and window sizes etc and come pretty close and this is pretty much how I've done it again you can grab any plan scale it using the tape measure tool and then you're pretty much off and running So this house, again, is based on what they call the case study house number 12. It was never built. It uh, is fairly modern design when you think about that it was drawn in the 1940s. I'm trying to do a little bit of a walkthrough here to show you the exterior and the interior of the house. Again, I just sort of made most of these parts up as I went along. And uh, here's a just a kind of a scan through the interior of the house. All this stuff you can find online, beds, cars, furniture, etc. Place those in the model wherever you like. And uh, it adds some realism. One thing I was doing with this and I was trying to show on this video is a new plug-in in SketchUp called Diffusion, which they are calling an AI renderer. The reason they call it an AI renderer is because it is somewhat, and you can dial in how faithful it is to the model, and then somewhat based on words that you type into a description. In other words, if you type in 
uh, green grass, heavy woods, it'll place the house in the woods and, and give you a lot of green grass. If you say snow covered, it'll show you the house snow covered. Uh, again, I've got some examples here just to show you how that program works or how that plug-in works. So here's the model looked up from above and here is the first try at the diffusion plug-in. Here's another try at the diffusion plug-in. Again, like I say, it takes some liberties. Here it's put it on the waterfront and it's really hard to say uh, why it takes the liberties it takes and this is since it's the very first time I've used it I'm hopefully going to get better at training it in the description section to get it to be more faithful to the model and yet give you the kind of setting that you would be after. Here's a view t towards the uh, rear and the side view again with some different renderings put out by the diffusion plug-in. The, the amazing part I think about this plug-in is that these uh, renderings come out very quickly. You don't wait hardly at all for them to generate. Uh, if you type in nighttime you get nighttime and the lighting is provided by the program so I assume if I place light fixtures it will locate those but again I haven't even tried that yet. I think it's most faithful to the interior. Here's my model and here are some renderings done by the Diffusion plugin and I think uh, they're very good looking for an interior and again it was uh, sort of free thinking when it came to different furniture applications etc. And as you back back out of this house, I just have some final diffusion renderings just to show you some of the options available with this plug-in. Here's one that's more of a uh, uh, an illustration, a pencil drawing perhaps. This would be maybe more along the lines of a pencil drawing of the house. Here is uh, another pencil drawing of the house, maybe a little bit more of an artistic rendering of the house. Here is a watercolor of the house. Again, all these are choices within the Diffusion plug-in. Uh, here's another sort of a, a pastel kind of a drawing. Here's an illustration kind of a drawing of the house. And I've got a pencil drawing here. Uh, another watercolor of the house. And then some more true-to-life renderings. I, I, this final one, I, I, I just said snow covered and it gave me this and this last one I think is the most realistic of what this house might have looked like snow covered. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please subscribe and thanks for watching.